Ever try a lady finger? <laughs> With it being December and me already having done a big Christmas video, I decided to take a look into my backlog to see if there's anything else that's potentially Christmas related to cover. And I found this. Gingerbread men are Christmas related, right? At least I only ever see them at Christmas. Hmm, what original yet intimidating evil creature can we come up with for our horror movie? I got it, a gingerbread man, said someone presumably under the influence of many, many drugs. And you know who we should get to play this absolutely insane serial killing gingerbread man? Gary fucking Busey. Yeah, he does kind of look like a gingerbread man if you squint your eyes a little. This highly intellectual and in-depth plotline revolves around a serial killer doing some serial killing, getting caught and executed for said serial killing, and then being turned into a gingerbread man. Because f*** you, that's just what's going on now, I guess. A serial killer being turned into something non-human and then proceeding to continue with murderous shenanigans? Sounds an awful lot like something else I've covered recently. The only difference between this movie and Jack Frost is that this movie sucks. What doesn't suck is my ability to be able to bring you guys regular content that you actually seem to be enjoying, for the most part. But to be able to do that, I need sponsors. So with that being said, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. There's many things in this world that I hate, and thanks to growing up in the age of the internet and having my attention span absolutely demolished because of it, one of those things is waiting. That's where Raid comes in useful for me. Waiting for the kettle to boil, as us Brits do. Exporting a video or taking a bathroom break. You know, the ones where you're sitting there for so long and your legs start to go all fuzzy. Yeah, that's Raid's fault. I just can't stop killing and unlocking things. To get yourself some fuzzy legs, use my QR code and links in the description to download Raid yourself for your mobile phone or PC. Meet the newest and craziest boss in Raid, the Hydra. It's a giant beast with multiple different heads, each one a complete boss battle all on its own. The Head of Suffering is all about making you suffer. Among a ton of other things, it's got a new special effect called Pain Link, which lets the head share some of the damage it takes with you. If you hurt this thing too much, you're going to suffer as well, and if you're not too careful, this thing will end your team quickly. You'll need to bring some champions to take care of that Pain Link debuff if you want to keep all of the damage going in one direction against the head. The Head of Blight is a nasty one. It poisons your team, it leeches your team, and it protects its own. The Head of Blight can create a poison cloud, which makes it super hard for your team to land their attacks against the Hydra. This can absolutely ruin your fight. Rather than landing big meaty attacks, you'll be landing weak hits and missing all of your debuffs. You'll want to take this guy out fast before he shuts down your entire team. Luckily he's super weak to fire, so bring the head with the HP burn champions. Head of Torment. This head looks and sounds like a death metal album, which is maybe why it's so terrifying. It specializes in using true fear to drag down your team, making you skip turns and lose access to your skills. It's insane and the only way to stop it is to hide. You'll need champions that have Veil or Perfect Veil skills if you want a chance against this head. Raid's also giving away a super limited edition champion to every player in the game. Esports legend and Navi superstar, Simple. Between now and January 28th of 2022, Simple's limited edition champ is available for free to both new and old players of Raid. All you have to do is log in for 7 days between now and January the 28th and he's all yours. If you miss that date, you miss out forever. To get started now, all you have to do is click that link in the description or scan the QR code on screen now. New players will get an epic hero, Rector Draft, 200 K silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. You'll find your rewards here in the inbox for the next 30 days only, and once you're in, you can find me in game under the name Big Will YT, and if you're fast enough, you can join my clan. And it's that easy, just click the link in the description and I'll see you in game. The movie immediately begins with Gary Busey shooting somebody in the head for screaming, and I don't think that I'm going to need to censor it due to YouTube's automatic system not being smart enough to see through the Vaseline on the lens. He's robbing a diner I guess, or just shooting random people for the sake of it. Who knows really. When all of a sudden, this old guy pulls out a pocket knife, announces himself to the killer, and then proceeds to slowly walk over to him, threatening him. You know, I don't think it's socially acceptable for me to say that he was asking for it, but... Hmm... He then proceeds to stab the dead guy's son for good measure, after he tells Gary Busey to please put the gun down about 15 times. Put your gun down, please. Put, put your gun down, please. Put your gun down, please. Put your gun down, please. Just put your gun down, please. Shut up. I think by the eighth time, it's probably a good indication that he's not gonna do that. What is this, a family of suicidal idiots? He then turns his attention to the daughter and shoots her, before acting all surprised when he can hear the police sirens. Did he just forget that mass murder was genuinely frowned upon? <laughs> Talk about starting off with a bang. I have no idea what's going on right now. 
This is THE Gary Busey, right? The Gary Busey of Lethal Weapon, Point Break, and Under Siege? You know what, I think I should really look into his career more. I'm starting to get some serious Nick Cage vibes here. I guess I'm just uncultured when it comes to the world of Gary Busey. Sometime later, we see Sarah, the girl who was shot at the diner. She survived, and since her brother and father have died, she's taken over ownership of the family bakery. Because nothing takes the pain away quite like a good old donut. She's hung up newspaper clippings around her bakery, apparently she's his biggest fan, stating that he's been caught and executed for his crimes thanks to her testimony. It also states that his name is Millard Findelmeyer, but I'm just gonna call him Gary Busey. It tickles me. Someone cosplaying as a budget Nazgul drops off a box of Grandma's gingerbread seasoning at the door, so her co-worker Brick takes it and pours it into a tub. And not to offend all zero people called Brick watching this video right now, but who goes through an agonizing nine months of pregnancy, an incredibly painful labor, which involves pushing out a watermelon-sized parasite by the way, and goes, ah oh, little baby, I'm gonna call you Brick. Why not Cinderblock, or hell, why not even Stalactite? It's cooler than Brick. He then immediately cuts his wrist on accident, because health and safety clearly isn't his forte, but then he proceeds to go out of his way to place his bloody wrist on the tub with the food in it. Look at all that space! Hmm, you know what'll make these gingerbread men taste better? Bodily fluids. I don't think the health inspector's gonna like that one very much. Just like how I didn't enjoy the next section of this movie very much. Because according to my notes, all I've written for this next segment is boring. These boring activities include Sarah's mother firing off shotgun blasts at the business over the street, said owner of business over the street attempting to buy out Sarah's business, and Sarah having a little cry about her dead brother and father. After that absolutely riveting and totally very important I promise I'm not lying to you part of the movie is through, the blood soaked gingerbread seasoning is mixed in and placed into the oven to be cooked. And cooked the writers of this movie must have been, because oh boy. A fight then breaks out between Sarah and Lorna, the daughter of the business owner who tried to buy her out, due to her bringing a rat to the bakery in an attempt to get the place shut down. But only if she had just waited, because something tells me that the blood-soaked baked goods would have done that just fine. During their scuffle, one of them knocks a power box, which overloads the oven, setting the gingerbread man on fire. Before the gingerbread man then comes to life, because you guessed it, the gingerbread seasoning was really in fact Gary Busey's ashes. Blood and human remains in the gingerbread man? I wonder what's in the croissants. Lorna's boyfriend Amos is here now for some reason I guess, dressed in the most 2005 outfit that he could possibly be dressed in, before Lorna then explains explains to the pair that that alive and talking gingerbread man that they just saw must be the product of black magic. Cause yeah, sure, that'd be my first thought too, and totally not that I might be absolutely f***ing insane. Sarah's alcoholic mother then arrives, and comes face to face with the gingerbread man, and after thinking that it's just a drunken hallucination, Gary rather rudely cuts off her finger, before knocking unconscious one of the co-workers named Julia, who was supposed to be there looking after the mother. And I guess that this is just a really, really large bakery or something, or they just have unusually thick walls? Because apparently the people who are supposed to be just one room over can't hear the commotion of an old lady getting her finger chopped off. Amos heads out to Lorna's car to retrieve her phone and her gun, because something as small and brittle as a gingerbread man definitely requires a gun to be dealt with. Which also proves with the utmost certainty that they could all just get in the car and leave the scene of the sentient killer gingerbread man. I'm not sure who they would go to to get help, or how that conversation with the police may go, but at least they could just like, not stay here. Gary turns the power off, immediately followed by a shot of the outside of the store, showing that the power is clearly still on, before Lorna's dad arrives to try and look for her. Apparently Amos must have been really lucky when he came outside to the car, because Lorna's dad is immediately run over and crushed against a wall by Gary using baking utensils to reach the pedals. Hey, I'll give him points for creativity. Sarah and Amos then find Julia unconscious in the walk-in fridge, covered in what looks to be whipped cream with cherries on her breasts. Don't ask me why she's still alive, because as seen at the beginning of the movie, Gary clearly has no moral quandaries about murdering people for the hell of it. But maybe he kept her alive because he has some sort of strange cream fetish where the other person is required to be like, really really cold or something. At the same time as this, we see that Lorna's had enough of all this waiting around, and decides that she's just gonna leave. And when she goes outside, she comes across her dead father, lifeless, pinned between a car and a wall, just lying on the bonnet. And for what must be a severely traumatizing and really upsetting moment, she just kinda walks away from him. How dare his death inconvenience her. How inconsiderate. After dragging Julia out of the fridge and wiping her down, they proceed to keep the injured and potentially hypothermic woman in the building, the same building with the killer gingerbread man that did this by the way, because apparently if they go outside, he could kill them out there. Which yeah, I guess he could kill you out there, but guess where else he could kill you? In here. 
How does staying inside make you any safer? Amos already proved that he could get out of the building and go to the car unharmed. Plus, they've even got a gun now. As they're injured, potentially dying friend is wriggling around on the floor, moaning out in pain. They straight up decide to just start flirting and kiss each other for some reason. Ah, how romantic. Lorna comes back into the building, somehow able to leave and then come all the way back in unharmed. But I guess it's just too dangerous to leave, guys. She then gets attacked by Gary the Killer Cookie, who slices open the side of her face with a knife, and Lorna seems far more upset about the damage done to her face than the fact that her literal father is dead and pinned between a car and a building. Priorities, I guess. She storms off all annoyed about her face, but ends up walking directly into a booby trap, which triggers a knife that somehow manages to be stuck in her head. I'm not exactly sure how, as it happened off screen, but she dead. Alright, now there's a believable reason for them not to be able to leave the building. Maybe they should have led with that? Sarah finds her mother's dismembered finger, before finding her locked in the oven, and as Amos drags her out, Gary locks Sarah inside, turns it on, and knocks Amos unconscious. Considering he's the size of a gingerbread man, he's very capable. Amos comes to and shoots the lock off the oven door, before Gary somehow takes the gun from the grown man, just as Brick arrives. And by arrives, I mean he jumps into frame from up there for some reason. And with Gary now armed, he starts blindly firing at everyone, but somehow manages to miss all of these shots point blank, before Julia appears, apparently all healed now, and hits him from behind with a frying pan. Brick holds down the little sugary dude and bites off the killer's head before saying this. Got milk? But the movie isn't quite done yet, unfortunately, as when Brick is washing away the blood from his face, because apparently this gingerbread man contains more blood than the amount that was actually dripped into the seasoning, it's revealed that Gary has taken control of him. We know this because black eyes equals evil. He grabs Sarah and starts licking her with his now blue tongue for some reason, before Amos arrives, shoots him, and the others push him into the oven and kill him. Wait, he survived the heat in the oven when he was being created, how is that gonna kill him now exactly? Oh wait, it doesn't. I thought I was gonna get a nice little goofy comedy horror in the same vein as Jack Frost. Instead, I was given torture. I'd usually use the end section of a video to talk about the movie a little bit more, but considering I'm not exactly a fan of forcing needles into my eyeballs, I think I'll just leave this one here. Because what else is there really to be said about this? Excuse me while I go contemplate my life decisions. So after finishing up that big Christmas video, I wanted to sit back, relax, and make a more easygoing video for you guys to watch. Instead, I had suffering. But I'm sure that's what you sick f***ers like anyway, isn't it? And I just wanted to finish this video off by saying in the future that a clothing line should be coming next year. Another YouTuber doing a clothing line. How original. But seriously, if you're interested in that, definitely stick around and keep an eye out for it. Twitter, Instagram, Discord, all down below, you've heard the spiel before. And obviously a big thank you to the patrons of the channel. The people who went, this idiot deserves money. That kind of support is honestly just bewildering to me. The fact that you guys are actually willing to do that. So it really does mean a lot. Thank you to Dom, Bort, Hunters263, Rebecca Pitts, Total Drama Rebooted, A Dandy in Space, Martin Brannan, Natasha Twyman, Rin and Whiskey, Jarrett C. Bees, Nicholas, Pascal Mathis, Fighting the Pirates, Tajvia Sandhu, Richard McGowan III, Kyle York, Macy J, Reese Harford, Horatio, Jamie Thompson, Ramey Patterson, Chris, Michelle, Newcomb, and Fabian. Thank you so much to my patrons, and thank you to everyone else for watching.